Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hammer's Chat. We've got a little juicy, spicy topic today, and I think it's the right time to talk about it. We are two days removed from the Premier League game against Manchester United. Tomorrow is the Carabao Cup game against Manchester United, and I want to talk about my opinion on David Moyes. Because if you're a long-term subscriber, if you're a long-term watcher of the watch-alongs, especially where I speak about it most, you'll know that I've never been his biggest fan. You'll know that I've never been his biggest fan. And I've praised him a lot this season, but before making this video, I wanted to give it time. I wanted to, to watch the games a bit more, allow me to see how the trend lays out. You know, I don't want to react just willy-nilly. I don't want to go, oh, he did something I liked in one game that where I like David Moyes. No, no, no. I want, it, I, want it to, I want it to let it sit, watch a bit more. And I think now I'm ready to say some things that certain people in West Ham would have wanted me to say for a while. Um, but before we get there, just to let you know, Gio is currently still on his holidays. He's living La Vida Loca and all that good stuff. He's living it up, having a grand old time. He sent me a picture of a waterfall earlier, which was nice. Um, he will be back though, but that does not mean we will not have our full day match day slate of coverage, Hammers Chat, match day, a fun, all that good stuff. It's happening. The build-up will be live, of course, an hour before kickoff with Gonzo tomorrow. Come through, check it out, get involved, find out the lineups as they break talk to the people, talk to Gonzo, have a good time. Then half an hour before kickoff, I will take over for the watch along, which I will be live all throughout the game, all the way through first half, half time, second half, up until full time, where Gonzo will take over to do his live review. Come get involved. It's a grand old time. Live the highs, experience and, and wallow in the lows with us. Uh, but hopefully there won't be too many lows. And I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm relatively confident there won't be too many lows tomorrow, to be honest. And that's kind of what this spurring this video on, right? Because I've never been a big fan of David Moyes. I'll say that quite happily. I'll say that quite happily. I'll say it quite publicly. And I've annoyed a lot of people saying it. I have never been a big fan of David Moyes. Because I never enjoyed watching his football. I, I, I am someone who enjoys watching attacking football, free-flowing football, if you're talking about Illich's football, for example, that's a version I really enjoy. I really enjoy watching Jurgen Klopp football. I really enjoy watching uh, Pep football. I enjoy watching teams gunning for it, going for it. I enjoy watching teams who are attacking, controlling the game, you know? That's the sort of stuff I love. And David Moyes is the epitome of that. He's the, sorry, he's the antithesis of that, not the epitome, it's the wrong term there, Charlie. He's the antithesis of that. He's a defensive first manager. He's counter-attacking, um, break, breaking. He's not committing a lot of people forward. He's defending strong. And that stuff has a place, don't get me wrong. It's not like I think we should never ever do any of that. A key example is Manchester United games of the past. We've always had this conversation about Moyes is maybe a bit too scared against big teams and stuff like that. I'm the exact opposite. I think his system is perfect for those big teams. Let's let's be compact. Let's stay strong. Let's try and hit them on a the counter attack. That makes perfect sense for a team who are significantly stronger than you. But it's against the other teams that I had the problem with. When we were going up against, say, Southampton, someone like that, where we're going to still play that system. We're still going to, we will be able to pick most of the players. We'll tell you, we can damn well tell you it's going to be that five for the back formation we were playing. And we weren't committing. We weren't trying to take games to people. We were allowing them onto us, which is fine, but we weren't supplying our forwards well enough. We weren't supporting them well enough. We weren't, we weren't really trying to control the game. And that got us to where we got to a hundred percent. And you have to sit there and you have to say, do you know what? David Moyes got us to Europe. His system got us to Europe. And I, I'm not complaining about that. But for me, football is entertainment to some extent. So you have to sort of enjoy what you're watching. I don't want to sit here and be like, well, we're winning. You know, I'm not, I understand fans who feel that way. If you're winning, you're happy. And that's that's all well and good. I 100% respect that. I 100% think you're probably in the right. But for me, I want, I would rather see us lose but play a way that I enjoy it and see us actually step to teams then see us win 1-0 every week, right? Kind of crazy, I admit, but it's just how I feel. Was I wrong is the question that we need to ask. Was I an idiot? Yes, obviously it's me. I'm a moron. But specifically when it comes to this David Moyes thing, was I wrong? What has changed? Because now when I watch West Ham, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy watching West Ham right now. The other day on the watch along, I literally said out loud, I love watching this team right now. What has changed? Let's talk about that. But before we get to that, 
and, and get, get, get some praise going. We can get some hype going for tomorrow because I am hyped. We need to get hyped about the OneFoot app. Thank you very much for sponsoring us once again. Link in the description below and in the comment section as well. It's an app on your phone, right? You click on it to find out all your football news, your rumors, your reports, all that good stuff, team news, results, all of that amazing things that you love to see on Sky Sports or the BBC or wherever you get your news. But however, none of the guff None of the fluff. Do you want to hear about Cristiano Ronaldo some more? I don't. I don't. So what you do is you just go in the app, right? And you just follow West Ham. And that means it only sends you the West Ham stuff. So you only have to get the things you are interested in. You don't have to hear about Ronaldo. You don't have to hear about some other random, not, I don't know. I don't know. You don't have to hear about, I don't know, Liverpool or something. We don't have to hear about Chelsea. We don't have to hear about Tottenham. We could just hear about West Ham. One football app, it's lovely, get involved, follow it, get it, link in the description below as well as the comments. Have a little gander, have a cheeky look. The One Football app, thank you very much for sponsoring us once again. Now, what has changed? And if you're looking at the One Football app, you will have noticed the formation has changed. That's a little, you would have noticed it anyway if you're watching the matches, but just a little extra shout out for them there. You will have noticed what's changed big, big time in this season and from preseason is we've changed formation. We are no longer a three at the back, five at the back system. You know, what we are is a four, two, three, one. And this is crucial to me. This is why, I mean, one of the big reasons why I'm enjoying it so much is we are supporting our striker. We have three people behind the forward, gunning for it, going for it. They're not just defenders first. They're not just hanging back. We aren't just sitting there and pumping the ball long to Jesse Lingard or to Mikel Antonio and hoping they can create magic with it. And hey, last season they did create magic with it a lot. But how many times were we seeing just someone forward by themselves without the support around them? That's what happened with Mipo Odebeku. We want to talk about Mipo for just a split second. That Manchester United game, fittingly, he was brought on in a system he's not used to. Mipo Odebeku, as far as I'm aware, I haven't seen enough of him to judge, but people who have seen him more than me have, have, have said this, so I trust them. He's a poacher. He's someone, he, imagine Hernandez to an extent, right? Javier Hernandez. He's someone who's going to get in and around the box. He's going to be feeding, he's going to feed off people, right? And, and that's not Mikel Antonio. Mikel Antonio is a winger. So he's got that strength. He's got this pace. He can, you can punt at him and he might be able to create something. He'll at least be able to take some defenders out of the game. But what you want with someone like Mipo is you want people to get in involved around him and support him. And that's something we are doing now. The three behind the one, your Ben Rama, Bowen, Fornals connection. They're not just defenders first anymore. Now they are still defending. And when they defend, they defend brilliantly. They get into good spaces. And our defense is, is um, although we are conceding quite a bit, we're not that bad defensively. We're getting in good positions. We're getting structured well. But when we break, we break forward together. We push together, you know? That three behind a striker, again, are fluid. They're moving around and supporting each other. They're creating overloads in specific positions. You're seeing Fornals drift over to the right or Bowen drift over to the left or Ben Rama just being here, there, and everywhere. You know, when we do go back to defend, Ben Rama or whoever is that central person, it tends to be Ben Rama, tends to stay forward near Mikel Antonio. You know, it means they're not completely isolated. It's very rare now where you look at West Ham, you watch them play it, and you see someone completely by themselves up front. It just doesn't happen that often. Those front three are allowed, are allowed to move. They're allowed to go forward. And that's helping break those teams down who do sit deep against us. That's helping us give opportunities in those sort of games. They are still our kryptonite. We aren't still an, a team who are unreal at breaking teams down. It will get there. I have faith we will get there eventually. We aren't there yet. But we are giving ourselves a much, much better opportunity by taking it to teams. And we are also, that's the point, we're also taking it to them. The goals against Zagreb, for example, the first one specifically came from taking it to them. We moved forward, we pressed differently. We aren't so passive now. We aren't just sitting back and, and, and absorbing all of the pressure and then trying to break away. No, we're actually putting something a little bit back. And it is, it's only a little change. It's not, it's not something that's so significant. When we think of pressing, we think of Robert Snodgrass running like a headless chicken towards defenders who have the ball and hoping for the best, but he's by himself. So it's entirely pointless. The thing the guy behind me in the stadium would love. You know what I mean? There's a guy behind you in the stadium who's shouting, press, get him. And then he sees Robert Snodgrass running like a headless chicken towards the back. He's like, yeah. Bruv, I get it. We all enjoy seeing that to an extent, but to be honest with you, it's completely pointless because if, if the guy who has the ball has a passing option, you're running at me, I've passed the ball and then you have to go and chase the ball again like a dog. 
It's not useful. It's not going to help. What we do now is much smarter. We're not just sprinting at people. We move as a unit. The front three move as a unit, and they slightly start to hem people in. They reduce the passing options, and it's not this big big all effort, all action thing. It's very slight, but what it does do is, as you saw again, the first goal against Zagreb is it forces people to make dodgy passes. Passes they're maybe not comfortable of doing. When I was a center back as a kid, one of the first things I got told was do not pass it across the area because all it will do is cause problems and give strikers chances. We kept hemming them in, just slight movements, not big, not big wild presses, just movements to reduce the passing options to where the right center back had to force it back to the goalkeeper. He had no other options. His pass was a little bit dodgy because he was a tiny bit harried, not because people were sprinting at him, just because they were moving, reducing the options. Bad pass, Antonio comes in, we score. And we've done that consistently from the beginning of preseason to now. And it's it's a joy to watch. It's an absolute joy to watch. I am loving watching West Ham right now. And that's what made me so happy against Manchester United because we didn't revert back to what we were doing last season. Don't get me wrong, we were a little bit more defensive than we usually would be. We were a little bit more reserved than we were be. But we still stuck to that formation and we still attempted to take it to them. There were several times when we forced them all the way back to De Gea. That's the kind of thing I love to see. And it's the kind of thing I'm consistently seeing right now. And it makes me so happy. So was I wrong about Moyes? At the time, no. At the time, no. What I felt was what was happening on the pitch. It was, it was, I was a reflection of what I was seeing. But I can't say that anymore because now I genuinely enjoy watching it. I still have some problems with him. Look, substitutes at times can be a bit wild. I think Zagreb, he did it perfectly. I think Man United problems, but... But the performance on the pitch was good enough to where we didn't necessarily need to, I don't know, it, it wasn't as big a problem as it was last season, you know, and it's not as big a problem consistently as last season. On the watch along, we have a game called Sub Bingo, where we have to predict when David Moyes will make his first substitution. And that came because David Moyes never <laughs> made substitutions. And so everyone could have a joke and say 89th minute or whatever. Now he does them slightly earlier, which is good. It's a positive thing. I should say the fact that Mark Noble was allowed to come on in the 94th minute because we still had a, an extra substitute available when we were 2-1 down in a game we probably could have pushed and maybe got a win in or at least a draw in. You know, maybe use that sub earlier. However, it's a lot more positive. It's a lot more positive and we're taking it to teams and I'm just a lot more happy. So was I wrong? No, I wasn't wrong at the time. At least I don't think so. But I certainly can't say the stuff I used to say, and I think that's a massive, that's a massive, massive credit to David Moyes. You have to give it that. I said, uh, and this is, this is the last thing I'll say. In February, I was saying he should get a new contract, right? I wasn't happy, and it's not like I want to see David Moyes as a long-term West Ham manager at the time, but I was like, realistically, what more can this guy actually do to get the contracts? Unless you've got Jurgen Klopp sat there lined up waiting, what more is he going to do? Like, I didn't particularly enjoy watching the football, but he was getting the results. And if you're the owner of the football club and your manager's getting the results, what more do you actually want? I was saying you should have got a contract. And I felt like it was a bit ridiculous that it took as long as it did to get a contract. I don't want to say I'm happy he's got the contract now. But all of a sudden, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm happy with David Moyes. I'm happy with David Moyes, you know? So there you go. There you go. The people who know that I don't like David Moyes and have wanted me to say that for a long time, there you go. It's not quite what you want, probably, exactly. But uh, it's as close as you're going to get for now. We'll see how the season goes. We'll see how the season goes. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching. If you liked it, enjoy it. If you've enjoyed it, then like, scratch that. Let me start that again. If you've enjoyed it, like the video. That's what I was trying to say. If you're new around here, subscribe, you know, get involved. We do videos basically every single day. Like I say, tomorrow's match day coverage will be big and long. Come get involved. We would love to see you. I would love to see you in the watch along. Come tell me how wrong I am in the uh, in the in the watch along live chat. Tell me how wrong I am in the comments below. Do you think I'm an idiot? Am I being unfair still? Maybe I am. Maybe I'm. I'm, I'm open to being wrong. To be honest with you, I think I'm wrong most of the time. So if if anything, let me know in the comment section below and come tell me in the live chat as well in the watch along because that'd be fun for me. That'd be fun for me to be sat in here and just accept people telling me how wrong I am. I'm getting involved. Come on, you irons, and until next time, have a good one. See you later. Bye.